Thank you for watching this video. We're so thankful that we have this technology still, but boy, do we still uh, miss you all so much. We look forward to being together uh, soon, but we are thankful uh, for the opportunity for us to continue to grow together using uh, videos. I'm thankful that we can do those for, for all ages and that uh, people can just continue to hear God's word proclaimed. Change can be a very nerve-wracking thing, and right now our world has experienced a whole lot of change. There's been a whole lot of different things uh, happened that have just kind of caused us possibly a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry. And so in my last video, we began a series I'm calling Don't Worry, Be Happy. And what we're doing is we're going to go through the Bible and we're going to look at God's Word. We're going to look at what it says about anxiety. We're going to look about what it says about worry and we are going to see what it says to be the remedy of those things. Today we're going to do something a little different. Instead of looking for uh, a remedy to, to anxiety, we're going to look at someone who experienced a lot of change in their life and who had every reason in the world to be anxious. And this is going to add a little bit of application to the last video that we watched. If you remember from last time, we talked about Matthew chapter 6 verses 24 through 33, and we said that a lot of times worry and anxiety happens whenever we are focused on certain things, whenever we, we get so focused on things and the, and the problems that could possibly arise, we begin to get worried and, and anxious. We said the remedy to that was, was focusing on God. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And whenever we do that, we spend less time worried about things because we're not thinking about those things as much and we're thinking more about God. We also said that sometimes worry and anxiety can come from a, from a lack of trust in God. But whenever I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I'm reminded of who God is. I'm reminded of the fact that God wants to take care of me, that God loves me, and that he is capable of taking care of all of my problems. See, change can be nerve-wracking, but God does not change. And that we can take great comfort in. Daniel was a guy that experienced great change and great chaos, just like you and me. Matter of fact, in my opin opinion, Daniel went through something way worse than what you and I are experiencing right now with COVID-19. Daniel was taken away from his country, from his homeland, from his family. He was put in a different country to serve a different government. A government that did not recognize God. See, and while I hate being quarantined and I hate being away from my church family, I am so thankful that I am not in Daniel's shoes. But the way that Daniel handles himself is remarkable, and I think there's a lot for us to learn from Daniel as we look at how Daniel handled the change that he experienced. Let's look at Daniel chapter 1. We're going to start reading in verse 3. This is right after it introduces that King Nebuchadnezzar has siege uh, Jerusalem, and we're about to read about what Nebuchadnezzar does next. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to, un to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishael he called Meshach. And Azariah he called Abednego. 
these guys begin to experience a great amount of change. They were taken from their homeland to Babylon, where they were going to begin learning a new culture, a new literature, a new language, and their diet changed as well. Their diet changed to food that they weren't even supposed to eat, which is going to be kind of the climax of the story that we're talking about today. You see, they even have a name change. Their, their names are changed. Just everything in their life is beginning to be turned upside down. And again, this produced a great opportunity for worry and anxiety. But I want you and your family to take a time, time out from this video and to kind of see how Daniel responds to part of the change in his life, specifically about his diet. I would encourage you and your family to read Daniel chapter 1 verses 8 through uh, 16. And uh, then after you finish reading, maybe discuss what it is that is the key to Daniel's faithfulness. You see, even in the face of great change that Daniel experienced, God did not change, nor did God's expectations for his people. And see, the diet that the king was presenting, or the menu of food that the king was presenting, was not, was not something that God would have Daniel or his friends eat. So Daniel goes to the chief eunuch and asks to be given different food. But the chief eunuch is worried that Daniel will not be as in good of shape or will not be as, as full as the other people that have been brought in because he will be eating different food. And so Daniel says, look, just test us for 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, see how we compare. See, Daniel is confident that God's ways are still the best way. Just as God doesn't change when our circumstance changes, so does God's ways not change. They are still better even when our world, when our life is turned upside down, even when our life is changing. God's ways are still better. And his expectations for us remain the same as well. And Daniel knew that. Daniel had faith that God's ways were the best ways. See, God's expectations for what Daniel would eat had not changed even after Daniel was in exile. God's expectations for us have not changed even after COVID-19 has started. Even though we are being quarantined, God still has great expectations for his people. And it's our job to be resolved like Daniel. See, because in the face of change, when there was a great opportunity to be anxious and worried, Daniel chose to be resolved to follow God's commands, despite all that had changed. See, we need to have that same determination that Daniel had, even in the face of all this change, because... God is still God, and he's still going to take care of us. He's still going to be there for us. See, Daniel was able to be this resolved because he was focused on who God was and who God is still today. See, we can focus on who God is still today, and that will lead us to being just as resolved. You see, because God's expectations for us have not changed. We are still expected to worship him on the first day of the week. Granted, we're doing that in a completely different way. That's not, that's not the most desirable way. You know, I wish we were all together every Sunday still. But we are able to still worship God together in a roundabout way. And I am so thankful for that. I hope that you and your family will continue to choose to worship God. Not that you'll just choose to worship God, but that you will be determined to worship God every single Sunday. I also hope that 
that in spite of all these changes, you and your family will still be resolved to study God's word every opportunity. See, because God expects us to, to be in his word because it's the only way that God communicates to us. And I hope that you will be resolved to spend time in God's Word. I hope that you will be resolved to continue to pray to God. Praying that COVID-19 will soon be over and that we'll soon be able to meet together, but also just praying for your personal life and your, your personal spiritual growth. I hope that we can remember that despite all that's changing and COVID-19 going on and us being quarantined, that there are still people out there who are lost, and who need to hear the saving message of Jesus Christ. I hope that we'll remember that God still expects us to be evangelists. He still expects us to go out into all the world. And though we may not be able to go out, maybe we can call people to encourage them. Maybe we can send an encouraging text message saying, Hey, I would love to, to study the Bible with you digitally. Hey, I, I know that there's some craziness going on in our world right now. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I, I hope that we would do something. Not just that we would do something, but that we would be resolved to do something. That we would be determined to do something. To help someone who does not know about Jesus and his saving sacrifice. To tell them about it. I hope that we would do something to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And maybe the most important thing for us to remember, despite all these changes, is that we are still a family, that we are still God's family. I'm still your brother, and you are still my brother, and you are still my sister. We are a family, and we have responsibilities toward one another. I hope that we will be determined to fulfill our duties as brothers and sisters, that we'll call and encourage one another, that we'll strive to hold one another accountable to, to worship and to uh, read our Bibles and to live a faithful and holy life. I hope that we will be determined to continue to act like a family. See, because change brings great opportunity for anxiety and worry, but it also brings great opportunity to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I hope that's what we will choose to do. I hope that's where we'll put our focus. And I hope that, that we won't be consumed with anxiety and worry, but instead we'll be consumed with fire to serve the Lord. And that we will take our passion for God and for his church. And that we'll share it with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That we'll share it with the lost. And that we'll share it with ourselves. And try to grow ourselves during this time as well. While change brings a great opportunity for worry and anxiety, it also brings a great opportunity for faithfulness. And it is my hope and prayer that our faithfulness will shine during this time. It will shine so bright that we ourselves are encouraged by one another and that we even encourage brothers and sisters of other congregations. And I also hope that it shines so bright into our community that the lost are infected. The lost are affected and that they come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. See, we can use this as an opportunity to grow ourselves and to grow the church. And that is what I believe God would have us to do. I want you to know that I'm praying for you and that I love you. Let's pray together. Our God and our Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you've blessed us with. Please, Father, forgive us of our sins and help us, Father, to grow closer to one another. Father, during this time of separation, we miss one another greatly. Father, I pray that you'll help us just to reach out to one another in different ways and to encourage each other through different avenues. Father, you're a great God, and we're thankful that we get to serve you. Father, we pray that you will just 
watch over us and help us, Father, to, to let our faithfulness shine during this difficult time. Father, you are a great God, and we're thankful that we get to serve you. We're thankful, Father, that you hear our prayers, that you want to hear our prayers. And, Father, I just pray that you will be with the brothers and sisters of this great congregation. Pray, Father, that you will bless them and that you will, that you will help us all just to get through this difficult time of, of quarantine. We pray, Father, that our, our minds will not be consumed uh, with worry, but rather they will be consumed of ways to grow closer to you and to help others grow closer to you. Help us, Father, to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.